In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the MVC pattern and how to implement the MVC pattern in our web application using servlets and JSPs. Uh, MVC actually stands for Model, View, and Controller, and it's a front-end design pattern that is useful for designing uh, web applications. So we're going to look at what MVC is and uh, how we can actually implement the MVC pattern. Uh, a good analogy that I uh, normally use when I explain MVC is to think of uh, you know the experience that you would get when you're in a restaurant. In a typical restaurant, we'd have these three roles as uh, employees who'd be working in that restaurant. The first one is a waiter, whom we all know. He or she is the person who waits at our tables and collects our order. Uh, the second role is that of the cook, who actually cooks the dish that we order. And the third role is that of a presenter. This is something that you would see in the more fancy uh, restaurants. They actually decorate the food and make it uh, presentable. Now let's see how these three roles work with each other. Let's say we are in a restaurant where we have employees which uh, who belong to uh, you know, either the waiter role or the cook role or uh, the presenter role. So let's see how they work with each other. Uh, let's say you're at uh, a table and uh, you order something out of the menu. Now, your order will be collected by the waiter. And now the waiter is not the person who actually uh, prepares the dish. Now, the waiter passes on your order to the cook. Now, the cook prepares the dish and the cook is not worried about where the order came from. So all the cook worries about is to make the dish and uh, have it ready and available. Now, after the cook cooks the dish, then the, you know, the food is passed back to the waiter. Now the waiter takes this dish, the cooked dish, to the presenter. The job of the presenter is to actually make the cooked food look more appealing. So they add things, organize things in a way that it looks really good on uh, the table. So after the presenter is done with, uh, you know, their work, the food is passed back to the actual person who's ordered the dish. Now this is actually an MVC pattern. Now we have uh, the model, the view, and the controller roles all being performed here. Okay, now before we try to map this to MVC, uh, let's think about why we have these three different roles. Why do we have uh, the waiter role, the cook role, and the presenter role? Uh, the advantage of having these three roles separate is that there's no there's no mixing of uh, you know the responsibilities. There is separation of concerns. Now, the waiter doesn't have to know how to cook. All that the waiter does is take orders and pass it on to the right cook. Let's say we have uh, three cooks in the restaurant and each cook specializes in a particular uh, type of dish. Now the waiter gets the order and depending on the order, he or she just passes on the order to the right cook. Now once the order goes to the cook, the cook doesn't worry about where the order is coming from. The cook doesn't know how to take orders, for example. So all that the cook does is cook the dish and uh, once the dish is ready then the food is passed back to the waiter now the waiter passes it to the presenter now again there could be different presenters depending on different types of dishes and different types of orders but the waiter knows what who is the presenter who is perfect for the order that uh, is being served right now and the food is passed on to the right presenter. The presenter, again, does not worry about how to take orders or how to cook. All that the presenter knows is to actually present it in a proper form, you know, in the proper way. And once the presentation is done, the food is passed on to the actual person who has ordered it. Now, this is actually the MVC pattern, as I told you. Now, let's look at uh, how it works in a generic scenario. So, now let's say I have the user uh, and the user is actually making a request uh, to a web application or a URL. So the first person that takes this request is the controller. So this is the C of the MVC, the controller. Now the controller is actually the wiring behind all this. The controller knows where to pass on the request, what to do with the request, when to send it back and all that. Now the controller analyzes the request and depending on the request, passes on the request to something called as a business service. Now let's say the request is to pull up all the list of users in the system. Now the controller does not know how to actually pull up the list of users. All that the controller knows is that there is actually another object 
who specializes in pulling up users from the system. And uh, this object will probably have a method saying, uh, you know, get all users. Now what the controller does is it calls this method of the business service saying business service dot get all users. And now the business service is just concerned about getting all the users, which it does. And then once the list of users is available, it passes on the list of users back to the controller. Now the controller takes this list of users and passes it on to what is called as a view. Now the view specializes in rendering this list of users in a proper format that the user can actually consume. Now once the view gets this data, which the business service has passed on to the controller, and which is again passed on to the view. Now once the view formats all the data and uh, makes it ready for consumption, it is passed on to the user. Now, what do we have here? We have C, which is the controller, and we have V, which is the view. So what is the M, the model? The model is actually the data that flows through over here all along. Now we have the request which goes to the controller. Now the request is converted to actual data which is the parameters of this method. You know, say we have the get all users. Now you might want to get all users of a particular department. So the department ID will probably be a parameter to this business service method which the controller will pass. And now the business service executes it and returns the list of users. This list of users is passed to the view and then again back to the user. So this list of users is what is the model here. Now we don't actually have a block for it here, but basically the model is what is being exchanged in between all these uh, three different boxes over here and then again pass to the user. Before we go ahead with actually implementing the MVC pattern, we look at some of the advantages of using the MVC pattern. Uh, we looked at one advantage earlier. Uh, there is separation of concerns. Uh, a waiter, uh, all that the waiter has to know is to wait tables, and uh, the waiter doesn't have to know how to cook. The cook doesn't have to know how to wait tables or to present, and uh, the presenter doesn't have to know how to wait tables and how to cook. So each role is specific to what they're doing, and uh, there is uh, complete separation of concerns. Uh, the second advantage is that uh, you can easily make changes. Say for example, uh, let's say that in the restaurant we have um, three cooks right now and uh, the restaurant happens to recruit a fourth cook which is a, who is a specialty in a, in a different type of food. Now all that the waiter has to know is that there is this new cook and uh, this is the specialty so that when the corresponding order comes the waiter knows to pass on the order to the right cook. Now the other cooks don't have to worry about this new cook as well. They just do their job as it is. And similarly if you have a new presenter all that the waiter has to do is to know what kind of food needs to be sent to the new presenter and the cooks don't have to worry about what they need to do different because they keep doing the same work. So we have uh, we have these different modules and these modules are insulated to change when it comes to the other roles. So each module does its job and then uh, it's, the, it's the controller, the waiter here, which wires the flow across all these different modules. Now the, the way we're going to implement it in uh, our web application is that the servlet is going to be the controller. So the servlet is the, the entity that's going to get the request from the user first. And from the servlet, we pass on the request to a bean. A bean will actually implement the business service method and it will return a response back to the servlet. Now the servlet will pass on this response to a JSP. The JSP will be the presenter or the view in this case. So the JSP will format the data in a way that is uh, that can be consumed by the user and this JSP will show this data in HTML format and the HTML format will be passed on to the user. Now there's one correction that you might want to point out in this analogy. Uh, the presenter might not be the person who's actually handing over the food to the to the customer in the restaurant. The presenter might probably just hand over the food back to the waiter and then the waiter takes the food to the table. Well, this actually depends on the way you implement MVC. Well, let's go with the assumption that uh, the presenter takes the food to the table for now. Uh, at least in our implementation, this is actually the view. The view layer is actually a JSP, and the JSP is directly passed on. It doesn't actually go through the servlet. 
And as you can see here, uh, the JSP is actually sent back to the user directly. It does not go through the servlet. So let's go with this assumption for now. We could implement uh, an MVC pattern in a way that uh, the view actually goes back to the controller and then the controller sends um, the actual output to the user. But uh, let's stick with this pattern for now.